Hi everybody. When you add labels to a map, there will be some labels, maybe a lot of them, that overlap other features, such as roads or rivers. This can make the labels hard to read. To avoid this, you can add something to the labels to separate them from the background elements. QGIS offers two main ways to separate label text from the background. Backgrounds and buffers. The background feature draws a shape, usually a rectangle, behind the label. You can control the shape, color, size, and offset of the background. It's important to set the color of the background to the same color as the map. By default, QGIS sets the color to white, which you don't want if your map has a colored background. Here's the same map with the background color set to match the map color. The other way to make your labels easier to read is to use buffers. A buffer adds a stroke around the label to help separate the text from the background. Here's an example of the default white buffers, not so good. And here the buffers are set to match the color of the map. In many cases, using a background or buffer produces the same result. The advantage of buffers is that the area, the buffer, separating the label text from the map's background follows the letters of the label. Using the background feature can add some extra unwanted space, like this. Since most people prefer to use buffers, that's what I'll focus on in this tutorial. In case you're wondering about the masking feature, masking also creates a shape around the label, but only where the label would overlap the marker. It doesn't cover any other features such as roads. This is not very useful, so I'll skip it. While you're working in QGIS, buffers work great. If you're going to create a map in QGIS and export it, and you're not going to do anything else with it, there's no problem with how it handles buffers. The problem arises when you export the map to Illustrator and you want to make changes to the labels. During the export as SVG process, QGIS gives you two options for labels. Always export text as paths, and always export text as text objects. The first option, export text as paths, converts the text to outlines just like the Create Outlines function in Illustrator. The type will not be editable in Illustrator, so if you want to change a label, you'll need to delete it and add it manually with the Type tool. QGIS recommends this option since it reduces the potential problems you might have with editable type, such as unwanted font substitution. So if you export the file with the first option, Export Text as Paths, everything works great, unless you need to change a label later. The second option, Export Text as Text Objects, preserves the labels as editable type. You can select them in Illustrator just like any other type, change their font, size, etc. This is the most flexible option since you can always convert the type to outlines in Illustrator if you want to. Here's where this gets interesting. When you add label buffers in QGIS, the labels themselves and the buffers become separate objects once the file is exported. This is true whichever text export option you choose. This may or may not be a big deal depending on how you work. You might think that QGIS adds a stroke to the text, which is how it looks, but that's not what happens. Here's an example using a green buffer so we can see it easier. In this case, I exported the file as always export text as paths, so the text will be converted to outlines. This looks like text with a black fill and a green stroke, but that's not what it is. Here I'll move the black text away from the buffer so you can see they are separate objects. This is no big problem. Since you can't edit the labels in Illustrator with this option, there's no need to edit the buffers either. If you want to move a label, just select all of the label text and move it, and the buffer will move along with the label. Now here's an example of the second option, export text as text objects. Just like with the first option, the buffer is a separate object, but it's been converted to outlines, even though the label itself is live text. While the label itself is still editable, the buffer isn't. This is a problem if you want to edit the label, since the buffer will no longer match the text. You'll need to add a buffer manually, and it's more complicated than it might seem, as we'll see. Here's the big thing to remember. When you export your map and choose Always Export Text as Text Objects, the labels will export as text, but the buffers will be outlined. This may change in a future version of QGIS, but for now you need to keep it in mind. 
So how do we deal with this problem? If you export your map to Illustrator and realize you need to change some labels, you can always go back to QGIS, make the changes, and re-export the file. But that's not a great solution if you've already done other work on the file in Illustrator. A better approach is to change the labels in Illustrator and add a buffer manually. These methods work the same whether you exported your text as paths or text objects. You might be thinking to just add a stroke to any labels you add in Illustrator, and the stroke will work just like a buffer. Since Illustrator lets you control the alignment of strokes, center, inside, and outside the path, you can just add a stroke, set the stroke alignment to outside, and you'll be golden. Forget about that. It won't work. While Illustrator lets you control the alignment of strokes, it doesn't let you control this alignment on live text. Any stroke added to text will be half inside and half outside the path, choking the type. Here's what I mean. Here's some text both converted to outlines and live text. When I add a stroke to the outline text, I can set it to align to the outside of the path, but when I add the stroke to the live text, those options are not available. While I hope Adobe changes this in a future update, for now we need a workaround. Here are two methods. First of all, if you added buffers in QGIS and need to change the label, make sure you delete the buffer first. Before you convert the label to outlines, move it away from the buffer so you can select the buffer and delete it. The easy way to add a buffer in Illustrator is to convert the label to outlines, apply a stroke, and set the stroke alignment to outside. The drawback of this method is that you can't edit the text anymore. If you want to change it, you'll need to repeat the procedure. If I only need to add buffers to a few labels, I usually use this method since it's quick and easy. The other way to add buffers manually is to use the Appearance panel to construct your fill and stroke. This takes more work, but the big advantage of this method is that the text remains editable. Here's how to do it. Open the Appearances panel. Select the text and set the fill and stroke in the Colors palette to None. Click the Add New Fill button on the Appearance panel and it will add a black fill. Set the fill color and opacity as desired using the settings in the Appearance panel. A stroke layer will also be added and set to None. Click on the stroke color and set it to the background color of your map. Here I've added a one point green stroke at the default opacity of 100%. It chokes the text, which we don't want. Here's the magic. Drag the stroke layer below the fill layer. Here I've changed the stroke width to two points. Since Illustrator applies the two point stroke to the center of the path, this leaves a stroke width of one point extending outside the path and acting as a buffer. The inner part of the stroke is covered by the type. The big advantage of this method is that the label and buffer are a single object that remains editable and easily movable since the type and buffer are a single object. Also, since we created this effect in the appearance panel, we can add it as a graphic style and then apply it to other labels easily. With the type selected, open the graphic styles panel and select new graphic style from the panel menu. Give your style a name and click OK. Now you can apply this style to other labels. You can save multiple styles for different size labels, such as one for cities and another for country names. If you have labels over different colored background areas, the easiest approach is to apply the style you just created and then change the stroke color in the appearance panel to match the background color. You can also try using a thicker stroke weight, such as three points, to fill in the gaps between letters. This helps to cover road and water features. So should you add buffers in QGIS or wait and add them all in Illustrator? This really depends on your project and what you feel comfortable with. When you export the file from QGIS, all of the labels for each class of object will be on their own layer. This makes it easy to apply a buffer by selecting the layer and applying a graphic style, like I showed earlier. For example, you could add buffers in QGIS where you have a lot of labels, such as cities, and add buffers in Illustrator for smaller groups of labels, such as country names. Make sure you check the map carefully by zooming in and looking at each label. You'll probably need to tweak some of the buffers, especially their colors. You may also need to change the stroke width on some of them. 
Thanks for watching. See you next time.